from Force 13 HQ and from our contributors from around the world. This is June 14th, 2018. This is your Tropical Weather Bulletin for June the 14th, 2018. We have two cyclones active and four invests across the globe right now. Pretty much all of the activity is in the Pacific and we'll be looking at that in just a moment. In fact, immediately beginning with the Eastern Pacific, we've got Tropical Storm Bud, which is weakening substantially as it moves towards the coast of the Baja California Peninsula. It will still strike the tip of the Baja California Peninsula uh, as a weak tropical storm before moving off to the north, shooting to the north actually, um, into the continent as a tropical depression. Might make it into the US, into Arizona or New Mexico. Uh, as it moves off towards the north northeast uh, as a remnant low. This can sometimes happen, uh, not the most common of occurrences, uh, but as remnant lows they can happen quite frequently. Certainly shouldn't be a tropical cyclone still by the time it gets there. Uh, now you've also got Invest 93E there too, with a 60% chance of development in the next five days. Uh, that storm could possibly, uh, we don't expect that that storm is going to move out to sea. So it looks to me, and from the model's perspective, as though that one may just, just go straight line into land there in central Mexico, um, which, will also, which will obviously deliver some significant amounts of rain. North Atlantic has an invest as well, 91L, with a 20% chance of formation in the next five days. Uh, the deal with this really is that there's a very small window of opportunity for this invest. Uh, if it does develop, it will be a very brief, fast moving, we expect, tropical cyclone, and it will either move into northern Mexico or into Texas um, as a weak tropical storm if it gets there. Uh, but it could be the case where maybe it, it might become a. Um, it may get tropical storm force winds, but not the circulation required for the status. So we'll see what happens with that. But at the moment, it's located with some significant convection off the coast of the Yucatan. North Indian Ocean's quiet, and the Western Pacific isn't. Uh, tropical Depression 7W formed not so long ago, according to the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. And the JMA have uh, designated Invest 95W right behind it as, an, uh, as a tropical depression. 50% chance on that. 7W is expected to peak as a minimal tropical storm, short-lived as well as it moves along, uh, moves through the Ryukyu Islands and then along the southern coast of Japan with that invest following in its footsteps quickly. Uh, and on the right hand side there is Invest 92W, 40% chance on that. Right now that could also develop in the deeper tropics there as it moves towards the west. Uh, could be a potential threat to the Philippines later on, but we'll see what happens with that. Uh, at the moment, I don't think there's any huge takers on the models, but we'll see if it does get its act together. Uh, that is all of the overviews. Uh, let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery. Here's the Eastern Pacific right now. You can see what's left of Bud, and you can still see the remnants of a letter there to its west. Uh, and Bud there has a, a very interesting, sort of still got an eye, but not really. Uh, a central area near the center of the storm, uh, which is looking pretty uh, light. Gives the impression that it's got a big eye when it doesn't really, there's not a particular eye wall there, otherwise we'd still be calling this a hurricane, but you can see its bands moving through uh, the coast of Mexico. We'll, we'll get a close up on that shortly. The Atlantic looks like this. You can see quite clearly the uh, convection from that invest uh, on the Yucatan Peninsula, just off the eastern coast of Mexico. Uh, and its cloud coverage extends over Mexico as well, over the southern uh, Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the rest of the Atlantic, as usual at the minute, is looking quiet. We don't really expect any um, main development region activity until a little bit later, end of July, early August perhaps when you may see your first significant storm uh, from the deep tropics out in the open ocean. In the Western Pacific, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, so is the imagery by the looks of things. I'm not responsible for that. Only a few frames are available, it seems. Um, but you can see what is going on. It's sort of developing a bit of a train of cyclone or just half-formed cyclones uh, along the coast of Taiwan northeastwards through the Japanese islands. Uh, and 
off beyond there even. You'll see a bit more clarity on the model shortly. Uh, and you can see that small feature just south of Guam is the invest, if I'm not too mistaken. Or maybe it might be that further to the east, I can't quite tell which one it is. Uh, but Invest 92W is down there somewhere and is expected to continue towards the west. And that's Australia right now, not much going on there. Uh, and the Indian Ocean, and here are the floaters which I also really wanted to show you. Uh, showing those systems on the left, uh, 7W. <laughs> not much to s pick from it on the uh, satellite imagery as the visible is there. I think there is a circulation. Uh, just, yes, there it is, just east of Taipei and moving off towards the northeast. 95W, the numbers will get confusing, I'm sure, just south of China there. Uh, moving towards Taiwan, could deliver significant rainfall to Taiwan and China uh, in the middle. And on the right hand side is, of course, Bud, and a little bit of a close up there on its so called eye. What's left of it? Uh, its central area, and what's left of an eye wall. Uh, which still appears to be strongest in the northeast. Bit of convection associated with the storm occurring over land there as well. Okay, well, let's go now to the sea surface temperatures. Uh, this is the latest. It's two days old apparently, but it still should uh, do a pretty good job. You may remember from earlier tropical weather bulletins how uh, in the uh, coastal waters off Mexico in the eastern Pacific the water temperatures used to be 30 plus only a little bit of that actually remains now so there has been significant upwelling from these first two major hurricanes that we've had um, and where Bud is right now uh, temperatures are falling off cliff so it's really no surprise that it looks the way that it does the Atlantic uh, 26 28 degrees plus even in the Gulf of Mexico certainly enough fuel for another significant tropical cyclone there much more significant than Alberto a little bit later on in the season uh, still taking a little bit of warming up uh, in the main development region and the eastern Atlantic it's a bit slow to start over there the Indian Ocean very warm uh, the Western Pacific as a whole is also very warm over all of those systems sea surface temperatures 28 degrees or higher uh, now let's take a look at the latest models. So first of all the Atlantic as we enter the coming seven day period. Uh, you may start to see off the Yucatan Peninsula into the Gulf of Mexico something developing hopefully. Uh, and there it is as we get through the weekend and only a very small brief system is that's, that's the best chance of seeing a tropical cyclone according to the GFS model. Whether that is a tropical cyclone there or not we don't know but I would suggest not. Uh, my inkling is that we won't get tropical activity out of the invest. Eastern Pacific looks like this you can see Bud uh, GFS still having it uh, holding on as a significant tropical storm uh, as it hits the southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula and then into land and then you can see just about on the east there Carlotta forming and almost dissipating before it even reaches land uh, uh, later on. Uh, into the weekend into next week after that East Pacific looks quiet the Western Pacific and you can see this big mess of all of these storm systems that are moving through the first one going off there past Japan that's 7W the second one now leaving Taiwan that's 95W moving through Okinawa uh, is there a third one behind it as well I can't remember what it looked like but you can see 95W there that looks like a tropical cyclone as well um, and still breezy through Taiwan more gustiness there, another frontal system pushing that storm away as it grazes the Tokyo area and beyond. So it looks like a very inclement few days in Taiwan, drawing the line up through Japan. The North Indian Ocean is, I assume, still looking fairly quiet. Uh, maybe there was a small disturbance there in the Bay of Bengal, but I don't think we're expecting anything significant at all in the North Indian Ocean in the next seven days. Of course, we've had the uh, significant development of Mekunu last month. That was a little bit of a bolt out of the blue. Usually we get Bay of Bengal activity at around this time of year, uh, but nothing on the cards in the next seven days. Okay, well, now let's take a look. Uh, I don't know if we've got a wind shear graphic, have we? Yes, I think this is the latest wind shear graphic. Yes, you can see uh, 7W there marked by the L symbol. Uh, wind shear is very hit and miss as you can see it's on a decreasing trend 
uh, but it does appear that wind shear will be significantly elevated as the storm moves towards the northeast, although it is decreasing, so I wonder whether there may be a chance for it to develop a little bit more than the 40 mile an hour peak predicted by the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. Wait and see on that. Uh, just a look at some of the computer models as well, the HWRF. Uh, this is, we're looking at BUD and 7W as it is now, used to be 93W. Uh, BUD there is pretty self-explanatory, uh, although holding on to Tropical Storm until landfall apparently, uh, the second landfall. And uh, BUD there, uh, sorry, the, the uh, 7W moving off towards the northeast, looks interesting. A uh, significant Tropical Storm as it moves off towards the northeast, just south of Japan, and maybe some Tropical Storm Force winds being felt along some of those coastal areas it moves out. I'm guessing an extra tropical transition somewhere along the line there. Uh, this also shows RAL's version uh, and 91L. Although most of those models aren't really to be taken seriously at all, uh, any of the models that have um, credibility uh, don't really take this system beyond the Yucatan Peninsula. So not much to be said there. And if we can move on, this is also another area around Bud, and you can see that wind shear is low, SSTs are dropping though, falling off a cliff as said, relative humidity is generally on a decline as well. Alright, well, uh, 2018 to date in the Western Pacific, we're now a little bit ahead of schedule, and just one storm behind 2015 on this date, would you believe? even though 2015 had much stronger storms than our season has had so far. Reminds me a little bit of 2016 uh, after Nipartak formed what we're currently seeing at the minute. A bit of a mess in the Western Pacific after it's had a pretty um, sluggish start to the year overall. But as you can see, the general trend is that the uh, activity really uh, ramps up as we get towards the end of June into July and then August. Uh, those are pretty much the busiest uh, months and it sort of goes into September as well at the same pace and then it starts to die away in October. And just a quick look at on this day in 1956 a hurricane made landfall in Guerrero, Mexico. Could do a Carlotta maybe. 1958 a tropical storm made landfall in Oaxaca as well. Uh, Typhoon Yunya reached Luzon in 1991, if I'm not mistaken that was the one that coincided with Pinatubo. And in 2006, Tropical Storm Alberto made landfall in Florida. Just to get a little perspective there, ours came a little bit earlier this year. And if you're wondering why Alberto is, is, has been a feature more than once, uh, the names shift around every six years. And we've had Alberto every six years since 1982 one of the originals with the current naming policy that's all for now and to our outlets you can follow 413's outlets the website 413.com you can also find our youtube page search 413 subscribe if you haven't you can also find our facebook page under the same name and we're also on twitter it's at Force 13 if you'd like to get in touch or follow our page there. Force 13 also launched a new Patreon page if you'd like to consider helping the project out, supporting it uh, as it goes even bigger and better as Alex Zaragoza and Hank Dolce has done so far. Please consider it. Take a look at the page. All contributions are invested straight back into the project. You can also add Force 13 on Skype and my personal account, Fool13 at extension 9094 on Discord for Tropical Weather Chat.